a cell phone company charges $60 a month for up to one gigabyte of data. All right, so it's gonna charge $60 a month, so that's a fixed amount, okay? Whether you use less than a gigabyte or a gigabyte, you're still gonna get charged $60, oh, okay. Then it says that the cost of an additional of additional data is five cents per megabyte. Oh gosh, here we go. Now we go from gigabytes to megabytes. How many megabytes in a gigabyte? 1,024. It's always like that. How many kilobytes in one megabyte? 1,024. How many bytes in a kilobyte? 1,024. All right. So D represents the number of additional megabytes used. Okay, and C represents the total charges at the end of the month. Which linear equation could be used to determine a user's monthly bill? So all of our equations are solved for C, okay, in terms of D. $60 minus $0.05 cents per uh, megabyte. Uh huh. So it's gonna charge five cents per megabyte, but you get in charge sixty dollars for the one gigabyte you use, and then you your price is gonna decrease. The cost is gonna decrease. Nah, it doesn't work like that. How about the second one? <clears throat> sixty dollars. Okay, I think this one says sixty dollars multiplied by five cents per megabyte. Nope. <clears throat> How about this one? $60 per megabyte minus 5 cents. Doesn't make any sense. How about this one? $60 per the 1 megabyte, I mean for the 1 gigabyte that you used. And then plus, in other words, in addition, okay, additionally, 5 cents per megabyte. Okay, that's it. We found our answer. It says, a typical cell phone plan has a fixed base rate that includes a certain amount of data in an average charge for data used beyond the plan. Okay, a cell phone plan charges a base fee of $62. So $62 is fixed, you cannot change that. <clears throat> in an average charge of $30 per gigabyte. Okay, so plus $30 per gigabyte. I really don't know what letter represents that. Let's see if they give us the letters. That exceeds two gigabytes. Okay, so thirty dollars per gigabyte of data that exceeds two gigabytes. All right, no problem. So now, if C represents the cost and G represents the total amount of gigabytes of data, which equation could be used to? Which equation could represent this plan when more than two gigabytes are used? Okay, so let's pretend that more than two gigabytes are used. Okay, I gotta find an amount here of gigabytes. If I just put G in here, let's just have that. Okay, $62 plus, okay, the amount that you pay when you exceed two gigabytes. Here, if G is zero, okay, if I did not exceed anything, then uh, if, I, if I use zero, zero gigabytes, I'm gonna pay $62 because that's a fixed plan. If I use one gigabyte, <coughs> that means that I will have to pay $30, okay? One times 30 is 30. I'm gonna end up paying $92. But it says that I should exceed two, exceed two gigabytes. So this doesn't make any sense. That means that after I pay more, I, I use more than two gigabytes, I'm gonna pay $30 extra for whatever, whatever, gigabytes I use after I exceed the two. So <clears throat> let's see now. If I make, okay, I'm gonna put a two here. Because I have to exceed two gigabytes. If I only use two gigabytes, then I should I should not be I should not have to pay $92. I should only have to pay $62. So I'm gonna put a minus here. So when gigabytes I use two gigabytes Two minus two is zero. 30 times zero is zero, so I only end up paying the $62. Oh, okay, that, that, that works. So if G is three, if I use three gigabytes, let's say three gigabytes. If I use three gigabytes, three minus two is one. One times the 30 is 30. 30 times one is 30. 
So I, I'm going to end up paying the $92. Only if I use 3 gigabytes because that exceeds the 2 gigabytes, right? Therefore, choice number 4 is our answer. Okay. 65. The formula for the area of a trapezoid is area equals 1 half times height multiplied by the addition of the two bases, the top and the bottom. You should know what a trapezoid looks like. If not, then this is what a trapezoid looks like. Okay? Wait, I haven't caught you with this. Caught you. Okay. So the area of a trapezoid is 60 square feet. So the area, okay, this number right here is 60 square feet. Oh, okay. Its height is six feet. Okay. So, oh, by the way, this formula right here can be, and I'm gonna write it over here, can be rewritten as area equals. Remember, multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two. Look, all these times one is the same thing over two. So, this is more friendly. Okay. <laughs> more user friendly so now 60 equals and I'm gonna use this one instead of this one because I don't really want to multiply by a half I just rather divide by two the okay the height is six so six feet okay <clears throat> and one of the base is 12 feet okay so 12 plus uh, the other base I really don't know what it is find the number of feet in the other base not a problem. Remember, everything was divided by two or multiplied by one half, however you want to see it. So, I'm going to be smart. But before I sm I'm smart, I'm going to use algebra. So, let's solve this for the B. So, the first thing is, do I have distributed property? Yes, I do. So, I'm going to take care of the distributed property. So, I'm going to have 60 equals to, what is 6 times 12 72 so that's 72 plus 6b okay over 2 now Becker could you have just divided 6 divided by 3 and that simplifies everything yes of course but I'm just trying to follow the golden rules so, okay now do I have fractions yes so multiply by the common denominator which is basically 2 so I'm gonna multiply the whole thing by two. These two numbers cancel out, or two divided by two is one, okay? Two times 60 is 120. <coughs> okay? And now, I'm gonna subtract uh, 72 from both sides. So 120 minus 72 is 48, and that equals to 6b, divide by, C, by 6 on both sides, and I get b equaling to 8. <coughs> so now, the length of the other base is 8. Wasn't that difficult, right? Cool then. So now, let us move on to the next problem. And please, if they ask you to justify or whatever, make sure you write. The length of the other base is 8. Okay? 8 feet. 64. The formula for the volume of a cone is this one right here. Once again, I don't like this formula uh, the way it is. I mean, you could use it the way it is. I just don't like it. So, I'm going to rewrite it. Multiplying by one third is the same thing as multiplying by one and then dividing by three. So in other words, that's the microwave right there. So this is my new formula. Now I need to find another pencil because I'm running out of lead. All right, so this is my new formula. I hope you understand that it's the same thing. <clears throat> so the radius r of the cone may be represented as so I need to find I need to solve for the radius I need to solve for this right here so what am I gonna do well uh, the golden rules work over here but sometimes it's easier to manipulate what is going on here 
there is a division by 3. So I'm going to undo the division by 3 by multiplying by 3. Okay? In other words, it's like saying distributed property, no. Fractions, yes. So multiply by the common denominator, which is 3. All right. So now I end up with 3V, okay, equaling. Remember, multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 cancels out. So that leaves you with pi r squared times h. Now, think about it. What's going on in here? This is what you want, r squared. So what's going on? Well, you want to leave it by itself. So you have to get rid of everything else. Here, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say, oh, do I have uh, additive inverse? Do I have like terms? No. Right away, I know that pi is multiplying r squared and that h is also multiplying r squared. So you know what? I got to get rid of them. How do you get rid of something that is being multiplied? By conducting a division by it. So now pi cancels with pi, h cancels with h, and I'm left with r squared equaling 3v over pi h. All right. I'm not done yet. I still have to solve for r squared. And if you watch the other episodes, how do I undo something that is being square? I have to take the square root of it. Okay, if this was a cube, then I take the cubic root. Okay then. So now I have the square root of r squared in this case is gonna be r. And now you have to be smart. I don't know how to take the square root of this but I don't have to. I just have to look at the choices now. Okay? So, my first choice. Does it look the same? 3v over pi h? Yes. So, that is your answer. Solve for r. Notice that here you might get confused that, oh, it's dividing by 3, but no, 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 no. Remember what we did. All the process. If not, rewind it and Look at it again. <coughs> okay, next problem. The equation for the volume of a cylinder. Okay, same, same thing here. So this is the equation for the volume of a cylinder. The positive value of R in terms of H and V is. Nice. Let's go back to the problem here. The square root of R square is positive or negative R. So that's why in this problem, now they want the positive value of R. Might have made a mistake before. So let's see. V equals to pi R square H. So how do I solve for R? This is what I want. Well, pi and H are, div are multiplying R, so I'm just going to divide by pi and by H. I could do one by one if I wanted to. Divide by pi rewrite the expression and then divide by h, cancel out and rewrite the expression. I'm just lazy. Ha, nice. Okie dokie. So now what do I have? I have b over pi h equaling r squared. How do I? Remember, they don't want r squared. They want the value of r. So I'm going to take the square root of r squared, boom, 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 and <coughs> r equals right here. Please don't do this on the regions. Please make sure you rewrite again the whole thing. Don't be lazy like me. So now let's look at the choices. Square root of V over pi H and we found our answer. Cool then. Move on to the next problem. Alright, problem 67. The distance Wait, hold on a second. Okay, no. The distance a free-falling object has traveled can be modeled by the equation of d equals half a t squared. I have no idea what they mean, but I guess they're going to explain it. A is the acceleration, ooh, due to gravity, and t is the amount of time the object has fallen. What is t in terms of a, of a and d? What is t? They want this. It has to, at the end, it has to be t equals, okay? That's what they want. What is t in terms of a and d? So, let us have our little thing. 
remember what I said about multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two okay so now let us solve for t that is the same thing as solving for r square basically all right <coughs> distributed property no um fractions yes common denominator two so i'm going to multiply by two okay or if you want to call it two over one it really doesn't matter what i'm trying to show you is the following if we look at the first at the original okay we see that everything is being multiplied by one over two so to get rid of this one i will have to multiply by the reciprocal which is two over one if i multiply by the reciprocal two over one two over one and one over two they cancel each other the same thing here two and uh, multiplying by two and dividing by two they're going to cancel each other so i end up with 2d equals to a t squared now what to do exactly divide by a i'm not gonna do it because i'm trying to save space so but i'm still dividing by a so i'm gonna write 2d over a equals and here since i divided by a they canceled out so that's equal to t squared now what how do i undo a t squared they want t not t squared so take the square root of that <coughs> and sorry it goes through the whole thing so the answer would be what da no i don't have da 2d over a ah, okay got it choice number two is the right choice oh, okay move on basically they he got a formula which is basically uh it says michael borrows money from his uncle who is charging him simple interest using the formula i equals p r t wow uh to figure out what the interest rate r is michael rearranges the formula to find r of course in other words uh manipulate the formula so it could look like r equals okay r equals that's the end result that we're looking for so let's start what is r what is being done to r it's been multiplied by p and by t so i'm just gonna divide by p and by t please try to understand this this is very crucial i hope you do okay if not then you can go back what i did was like okay there's no distributive property there is no like terms there is no variables on, well there's variables on both sides but when you solve in this type of equations where which are called literal literal equations you have to take a little different approach so by doing that p gets cancelled t gets cancelled and i get i over pt equaling to r so r equals this r equals i over pt r equals i over pt choice number three is your answer and with gucci to move on to the next one okay what's going on here okay we're good the volume of a large can of tuna fish can be calculated by using the formula and they give us the formula okay write an equation to find the radius oh, okay so they want r so remember at the end your equation should look like r equals all right so let's take a look at the formula v equals to pi r squared times h that's basically like a cylinder and we're supposed to find r you know how to do this right you've done it before and now what remember you have to rewrite again this over here i'm just being lazy so r equals v the sorry the square root of v over pi h and the whole thing has to be within the square root all right now try number 70. So I'm supposed to solve for n.
two ways of doing this. Actually, I'm gonna do it right here. All right, so I'm gonna use the distributed property. Oh no, what is the thing with the eraser? So I added 360 to both sides, so I get S plus 360 equals to 180N. Then I'm going to divide by 180. Right? So I get what? Wait, what did I do something? Did I do something wrong here? Minus 360, okay. Yes. Okay, so I guess I get S over 180 plus 2 equals N. Okay, S over 180. I could have wrote S, but then again, this 360 over 180, mm, that's, that's a 2. And remember that the whole thing is being divided by 180, so S is also being divided by 180. So that's why I put it over here. And then this one over 180 is a 2, so I cannot, I can no longer put them on the same numerator as S. Okay, so that was one way of doing it. The other way of doing it was the following. So I have S equals to 180 times N minus 2. That was the original. And now what I'm going to say is that distributed properties, that, that no, I'm going to say the whole thing is being divided by 180, it's being multiplied by 180. So I'm going to divide by 180. So I'm going to end up with S over 180. And since I divided by 180, this cancels out with the 180. That only leaves you with N minus 2. And now um, to solve for N, I'm just going to add 2 to both sides. And that's what you get. Same res oops, same result. See that? Okay, cool. Let's move on. Okay. Solve the equation below for x in terms of a. Ha ha ha. Very funny. So how am, how, am I gonna, how am I going to tackle this problem? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distributive property. So I'm going to get 4ax plus 12 minus 3ax equals to 25 plus 3a. Now, what else? Well, I am going to, let me see what else do I have here. I have to add the like terms. So 4ax minus 3ax is 1ax plus 12 equals 25 plus 3a. All right. Uh, what else? Do I have variables on both sides? Yes, but they're not like terms. Oh my God, how am I going to do this? Okay, I'm supposed to solve for X. All right, let's try different strategies. You could try a million strategies. I'm going to try one myself. I am going to bring this number to the other side and I'm going to bring this to this other side. I'm just going to bring letters to all the sides. So I'm going to subtract 3A. So it disappears from here. And I am going to subtract 12, so it disappears from here. Understand what I, what I did? If not, you could do it step by step. First, subtract 3a, boom, papa, then subtract 12, boom, papa. I did it in one step. Hopefully, you are able to do the same thing. All right. 
So this is what happens. I'm supposed to solve for x. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Ax. Ax. Nope, I didn't. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to basically, and please, please, this time you have to like understand when to use this. There is no amount of knowledge that I can give you that will make you analyze this the way that only you can do it. Look, I have A on both of these terms. So if I take the greatest common factor or the common factor, I end up with this. Do you see it? Look, a times x is ax, a times negative 3 is negative 3a. And 25 minus 12, what is 25 minus 12? 25 minus 10 is 15, minus 2 is 13, so that's 13. Okay. Now, I have to uh, solve for x. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide by a on both sides. It's crazy, right? So now, they cancel out and that leaves me with x minus 3 equaling 13 over a. Now, I am going to add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to get x equals 13 over a plus 3. Oh, if I wanted to represent this in a different way, like as a whole answer, then what I would have to do is take these two numbers and add them. 13a plus what plus 3 is what? Well, this will have a this 3 should have a denominator of a if I wanted to do that. So what I can do is I can multiply, okay, I can find the common denominator, which is a. Then I would have multiplied this. Okay, forget about this. This is your answer. I would have multiplied this by a. If I multiply this by a, okay, I would have to multiply this by, by the common denominator. So if I do that, I'm going to end up with x equals to 13, okay, plus 3a over a. See that? Okay, so that's it. That's that's basically what, what it is. <clears throat> Let's go on to the next problem. Okay. So the formula for the blood flow rate is given by this equation. Where F is the flow rate, uh, P1 is the initial pressure, P2 is the final pressure, and R, the resistance created by blood vessel size. Watch this, this is medicine, this is actually um, things for nurses and doctors. Which formula cannot be derived from the given formula? Oh gosh, okay. So let's see if we can look at it without solving anything. Can I solve for, okay, can I solve for P1? Yeah, I guess. Can I solve for P2? Yes. Can I solve for R? Yes. But wait, if you solve for R, let me write down the formula. F, and I'm going to give you a very simple approach on how to solve this. Okay, so to solve for P1, I would have to multiply by R on both sides. So this becomes RF. <coughs> okay, and you have it right here. RF plus P2. Okay, <coughs> and now let us go actually to the choice. Uh, to solve for P2, you'd end up with the same thing. Now to solve for R, to solve for R, I will have to multiply everything by R which in the which in this case you end up with rf equaling to p1 minus p2 because when i multiply by r this r gets cancelled out and this becomes rf now i'm solving for r so i would just have to basically uh divide by f
like that. And look at choice number three. It doesn't look like that. So this cannot be derived <coughs> by uh, manipulating the equation. If you have any questions, please, you can make comments and I'll explain to you in a more detail. If not, then you know what? We're good with that. Okay, 72. Try 72. Boyle's law involves the pressure and volume of gas in a container. It can be represented by the formula P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. When the formula is solved for P2, the result is. So they want P2. So I know that we need P2 equals to something. Well, try to do it. Well, let us write down the thing. So PV equals PV. One, one, two, two. I'm supposed to solve for P2, so I'm going to divide by V2. Divide by V2. And what we got is, instead of just writing divide by V2 and V2, I just put one V2 here. So I end up with P2 equaling okay this cancels out with this one so that leaves you with p1 v1 over v2 choice number three is the correct choice okay using the formula for the volume of a cone express r in terms of v of v okay first of all i have to go to the reference sheet and get the formula for the uh, volume of a cone which in this case would be V equals one third pi R uh, square times H and I'm supposed to solve for R here please you already know how to do it do it all right so in this case remember what I said about this being the same as dividing by 3 in this case I'm gonna leave it like that I'm gonna go the way it is so I, I am going to definitely this is multiplying R this is multiplying R this is multiplying R so how do I undo this using the reciprocals so watch what I'm gonna do this is gonna sound weird to you but this is what I'm, exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna multiply everything by the common by the multiplicative inverse so for example, what is the multiplicative inverse of 3? Of 1 over 3? Three? 3 over 1, right? Yes? What is the multiplicative inverse? Let me see. 3 over 1. Okay. Then look, pi is also uh, multiplying r squared. So I'm going to use the multiplicative inverse of pi, which is 1 over pi. h is also multiplying. So I'm going to use the multiplicative inverse of h, which is uh, 1 over h. All right? So, 1 over pi, 1 over h. Sounds weird. Yes, of course. Now, when I do all that, what happens? This 1 third, this one third and this 3 over 1 cancel out. This pi and this 1 over pi cancel out. This h and this 1 over h cancel out because this is like h over 1 and pi over 1. Now, on this side, 3 is multiplying v. And then, guess what? Remember, v times 3 is 3v, then v times 1 is v, v times 1 is v over equals r squared. So, however you, you do it, we did this in the previous problem, so if you want to use that method or this method, it really doesn't matter to me. Now, r squared, I need to get rid of that r squared, so you already know you have to take the square root, and this is your answer, so r equals... And this time I'm going to write it. The square root of 3v over pi h. See that? Cool. And that's how you do it.